Hi guys. Uh, welcome to another Home Safari Facebook Live. My name's Ellie and we're here with Libby and Paul and we're keepers here at the Cincinnati Zoo. And today we're going to be hanging out with some of our red pandas. Um, before we get started, we just want to remind you guys that you can type in any questions you might have. Um, anything you want to know about red pandas, any questions about these pandas specifically, we'll be happy to get them answered for you. Um, so right now in the yard here we have Lynn. Lynn is six years old. She's a female red panda. Um, those two right there are her babies, and baby red pandas are called cubs. And so her two cubs are named Audra and Lenore, and they are eight months old. These guys are almost one, and when red pandas are one, that's when they're old enough to kind of be on their own, kind of go off and uh, make their own families. Um, so they're not quite old enough yet, but they, <laughs> but so they're out here hanging with mom. And we also have Kenji, who is our only male red panda. He is somewhere out in the yard, too. He is four years old. Yeah, he kind of is a, a little bit more shy when all the girls are out here. But if you, when you do come back to the zoo, if you're looking for Kenji, you can find him up on the very top of the trees. He likes to take naps on the highest point of the trees there. Libby. <laughs> uh, red pandas, if you didn't know, are from the Himalayan mountain region, from China all the way down to Nepal and India. Uh, there's two species, fulgens and styans. We have fulgens. They are primarily from China. They're a little darker and a little bigger than the fulgens. Uh, you can see Audra is a little darker than her sister, so there are some color variations in different, different ones in the zoos. <laughs> uh, they have a very sharp claws. They are excellent climbers. They live up in the trees. They build nests in the trees. Um, you'll see they have a long tail. They'll use that to kind of balance when they climb, and they'll wrap it around their face like a scarf to keep them warm. Their red coloration comes from the moss that grows in the trees where they live, and as they blend in for camouflage. And then the dark underbellies, when you look up into a tree, you'll see that dark underbelly, and they blend in that way as well. Uh, if you look at their faces, they have kind of red teardrops on the face that helps reflect the sunlight. And then the white coloration actually luminesces in the dark so cubs can find their mothers. So they're pretty cool. The bottoms of their feet don't have pads like a dog or cat. They're all covered in fur. It's, it's, it's for insulation. They can walk through the snow. They are cold, hardy animals. They live in the mountains. And so they love this, this type of weather this time of year and in the snow. Uh, they do not make good pets, unfortunately, <laughs> even though we're in here with them. They do not like to be petted. They do not like to be picked up like a cat. They, they do not enjoy that at all. Uh, there's, like I said, sharp claws and very strong. Uh, right now we're just feeding them some apple, which is a favorite of theirs. They also eat some banana. So these guys are technically carnivores. They have carnivore teeth and a digestive system, but they eat primarily bamboo. About roughly 20,000 leaves a day. Uh, nobody knows why. <laughs> it's just one of those weird little things that happens in nature. Um, they will occasionally call, ca catch a small bird or mammal, and they will eat that. Um, and they'll eat some fruits and, and mushrooms in the wild. Uh, here, we, we do cut them bamboo in the park and give that to them every day. We also feed them a prepared leaf eater biscuit. Uh, it's, it has all the calories and nutrients they need. Um, Annabelle would like to know what their favorite toy is. Favorite toy? I would think we have fire hose hammocks. It's That's like a true. big hammock, and yeah. they love to lay in that and sleep in that. Kenji's right behind Paul there. The male came out. <laughs> he came is. to say hi. <laughs> and you can see he's a little bit uh, blonder than the females. It's just one of those things. Every paint is a little different. Some are a little lighter than that. Some are a little darker. Um, do they like to be bathed? No, they do not like to be bathed. Yeah. They take care of themselves. They'll clean themselves like a cat would, but yeah, they do not, they, we do not bathe them. They do not like water. We, they do not swim. Uh, they just drink water. That's all the water they, they do. They live solitary in the wild. Uh, sometimes you'll see a mom and cubs. Um, a lot of people are asking who their favorite keeper is. <laughs> I think they like any, any of the keepers. Paul is a very, is a favorite. He's been working with them for a long time, over 30 years. So, but yeah, I think they like anybody, especially if you have apples, they'll love you. <laughs> uh, oh, so uh, red pandas were discovered 50 years before the giant panda. So when the giant pandas discovered, they both are from the same region, China. They both are carnivores that eat primarily bamboo, and they both have elongated wrist bones that act like a pseudo-thumb, so they assumed that they were 
uh, related. So they were named giant pandas, and these guys were named lesser panda. It hasn't been until recently they did DNA testing and discovered that giant pandas are actually bears, and these guys are not. They are not related to anybody. They are in their own family category called Alluridae. Um, the closest would, they're related to is uh, weasels and mustelids, but they, they are not related to a giant panda. So they, these guys are the true and one and only red, uh, panda species, which is kind of fun. I don't know if I said this about them, their feet do not have pads like a dog or cat. It's all fur. It's a built-in snowshoe. So that's kind of cool. Um... Uh, these guys have uh, one to four cubs uh, at a time they can. One to two is average. Uh, the breeding season is, they're seasonal. It's in January or February. Uh, there's one 24-hour period when the female is receptive for having a baby or a breeding, and they'll have the baby then somewhere from May to August. June is kind of average, especially for us, June's average. Um, uh, Lynn here obviously had two cubs this year. She had two cubs last year, but she one to two has been her. It's been her average. Um, still waiting for four out of one of our pandas. That'd be kind of cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these guys are endangered. Uh, their habitat's being destroyed, unfortunately, and they're being hunted for their, their fur and for pet trade. Like I said, pets they make awful, awful pets. Those so sharp claws destroy your furniture. They also have a scent gland at the base of their tail, and they scent mark everywhere, because that would be all over your furniture. And like I said, they do not like to be cuddled at all. No picking up, no petting. So they do not make a good pet. Where do they sleep in their natural habitat? They sleep up in the trees. They'll lay, just lay in the branches and lay and, you know, across the, the branches there, or they'll build, sometimes the females will build a nest when they, she has cubs. But yeah, up, up in the trees. What's their favorite food other than apples? Uh, banana's a favorite. Bamboo, they do love bamboo. Whenever we bring that fresh bamboo out there, they go right to it and start eating. Do the males weigh more than the females? Uh, not necessarily. You can have males that are larger than females, but it's not, it's not, uh, you know, they're average. They're average between 16, uh, 15 to 18 pounds. So, pandas can be, males and females are not, you know. Different are they that way. Related to raccoons? They are not. They are not related to anybody but themselves. <laughs> Why does their tail look like a raccoon's tail? <laughs> I, you know, striping, I, I assume it helps with camouflage. I'm not sure why the striping is. If it, I assume it has to be camouflage when they're up the trees. Do they like uh, cold weather? They love cold weather. These guys are live in the mountains of China, you know, in the Himalayans, so they love cold weather. Actually, in the summertime when it's hot, we actually have air conditioning for them to keep them cool because they, they are, they're covered in fur completely all over. Only their nose and their eyes does not have fur on it, and they do not shut it out, so they are, they're made for cold weather. They love the snow. Do they have a, a different digestive system than humans? Uh, technically, yes. We're technically omnivores, which we eat meat and plants. They are technically carnivores, which eats, eats primarily meat. And even though these guys do eat primarily bamboo, which is a plant, it's one of those scientific things we do not understand. <laughs> um, Gabriella wants to know how much food they eat. Uh, they can eat about 20,000 leaves of bamboo a day. Uh, we feed them about... 300 to 500 grams of our prepared biscuit along with bamboo. We don't probably don't give them 20,000 leaves, but <laughs> we do give them about four to five stalks per panda a day. Any other questions? Why are Anything their tails else? so long? Uh, they'll use that when they climb. It kind of helps them balance, but they'll actually use it kind of like a scarf. When they curl up in the tree to sleep, it'll, they'll wrap it around their face like a scarf and keep, them, keep themselves warm. Okay. <laughs> Did they go back in? Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh. 
alcohol? Why are they called red pandas? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. I don't know that one offhand. I, I'm sure there's, I'm sure panda means something, and I just don't know it offhand. Do you know, Paul? I can't remember. <laughs> Obviously, the reddish fur. <laughs> Cubs usually stay with their moms. Ah, uh, they are probably with mom not quite to a year. They can, they're, but they can stay in the wild and stay up to about, about a year, but they, they can leave before then. If you heard that, that vocalization at all, that's called huff quacking. That is actually the term for that, that sound. It's one of the, vo one of the ways they vocalize. That's just mom and baby, uh, play fighting a little bit there. Nothing serious. <laughs> Uh, in the wild, they'll catch small birds or small mammals. We don't feed them meat here in the zoo, but in, in the wild, they, and they have caught a bird here in the exhibit before. Uh, he, was, he was scent marking there. He had, he's a gland at the base of his tail, and he was marking that rock. When are they most active? Uh, they are technically called crepuscular, which means they're active at dawn and dusk. These guys are a little more kind of all day. <laughs> Uh, they'll, they'll sleep more in the heat in the summer you know, during the day, but this time when the, weather, when the weather's cool like this, they're definitely very, very active and moving around. Especially right now, they're kind of looking for, uh, looking for the apples we were feeding them. <laughs> a piece. Want to eat it? Do they drink water? They do drink water, yes. Do they have baby teeth? Baby teeth. Oh, uh, I don't know that one offhand. Good question. I don't, I don't think, think so. That question was from Sam. Thank you for stumping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I've, I've never seen any shedded teeth, so. What is their lifespan? They can live mid to late teens. Uh, we had one that was 17 when she finally passed. There was one, where was that? Somewhere recently. It was in her 20s. Oh, yeah. I forget. 22. Yeah, 20, was it 22? Yeah. What kind of schooling do you? to be a red panda <laughs> uh, What kind of schooling? Uh, some people have biology degrees. I have a zoology degree. Um, kind of experience is psychology. a lot. Psychology. People are getting psychology yeah. degrees. Psychology yeah. degrees, yeah. Okay, that I think the pans are ready to yeah. get their afternoon <laughs> meal. So we're going to wrap this up here, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, if, if you're able to, we would love for you to donate. That really helps us with this. And we can't wait to see you guys come back into the zoo when we're back open. <laughs>